He's Dieter Kurdenbach. I'm Cyrus Sotz. The last time we were together, the Warriors had, I believe, a nine-game winning streak. <laughs> now they have a two-game losing streak. Oh boy, we better break it down. Yeah, we we and we will. This is Locked On Warriors. <laughs> On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. He's Dieter Kurtenbach. You can follow him on Twitter at Dieter. It's short and simple. Mine is not. Dog Surf Rocho is my Twitter account, and the show's Twitter is locked on dubs follow us there dude give us the first recap your thoughts on that really frustrating two-point loss of the knicks the warriors are good enough that that game was interesting it should be yeah. <laughs> like le- legitimately they got pushed around mm-hmm. and it's not there's an irony maybe irony is not the right word but there, there's a peculiarity for sure that good the word. trade deadline was earlier in the day the Warriors stood pat. <laughs> and then for a second straight game, and I get it, you know, playing in Utah is tough. Uh, yeah. Back to two city back to backs are tough. No one's going to remember these games, whatever. You, you <laughs> take it and go. They're 41 and 15. Like, come on now. Yeah. But <laughs> when you get your asses kicked in back to back games in the post, people are going to notice like they're getting bullied around and I uh, it's going to be interesting. They were never going to be able to make a trade. It's just full stop. Never going to be able to make a trade much like my 2010 Hyundai, the players that the Warriors (laughs) have on their roster far more valuable to them than they are to any other team. Right. I could sell (laughs) that thing for, for 1200 bucks. It's worth way more than 1200 bucks to me. And that's not even sentimental value. I hate the fucking thing. So, (laughs) but you can only trade minimum players for minimum players. And and who's this minimum player that's just, you know, dramatically available that, that is no one's going to trade a minimum player that has excise value. So like trading Jonas Jarebko doesn't do anything. It it just, there's no, there was no route unless you trade the young guys, which you shouldn't do, or you trade a superstar or an all-star, which you shouldn't do. You can't trade the minimum guys. So that's your team. But this team is small, and part of me thinks, well, Draymond will come back, and they won't get punked anymore because they've been getting <laughs> punked. Right. They have the it inside. Part, the other part yeah. of me says, oh, well, you know, James Wiseman is coming back, and he is at least tall. Like, who knows if he can do anything? But he's at least tall, by the way. James Wiseman had zero trade value whatsoever. And then there's a third part, which is, are those two guys even enough? Because it's not like just a small ass kicking in the post. And by the way, like they're never playing the Knicks in a meaningful game ever. So don't worry about that. Oh, it's a bad matchup. Who cares? Who cares? (laughs) It's the Knicks. Who cares? The Jazz is interesting. I do think in a seven-game series, the Jazz have one kind of smoke. The Warriors contain multitudes. That would change. But I look at the three teams now, or three of maybe four teams, that the Warriors should legitimately be worried about if they want to win a title. The first is the Phoenix Suns for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. And then there are three teams in the East, I think really two. You have the Milwaukee Bucks, who I think are the title favorites. Especially and, now with the addition of uh, of Ibaka. That just made them even better. And bigger. Yes. And the Philadelphia 76ers. Because I don't trust Agreed. for a second that the Nets are going to get their act together. They've lost 10, 10 straight games. I think Simmons is a nice addition for them. That's nice. It, it's Harden's out partying too much. But the Kyrie thing is still toxic. We don't know Kevin Durant yes. can play. And they, they have a couple of nice dudes now on the perimeter that they traded for yesterday. But uh, that, that team's weak. That team's weak. Mm-hmm. And I just don't trust half of Kyrie is going to be a real factor come a playoff series. So Philly, if we're talking real title contenders and I'm being generous with Philly, Philly, Milwaukee, Phoenix, the Warriors, the other three teams have a generational big man who cannot be stopped. Now, maybe I'm being a bit generous with DeAndre Ayton, but DeAndre Ayton's the man. He's the truth. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. And he's a problem. Love him. Giannis who I don't care what position you call him. He's a five. 
Mm-hmm. He's unstoppable. <laughs> unstoppable. Yeah. To the point where you just concede whatever Giannis wants and you hope you don't die by somebody else's hand. And Joel Embiid, who's playing at an MVP level, and now is emboldened because, hey, they got they got a, a clear number two for him. And by the way, a number two that will work with him in the scheme that we know Daryl Morey and the Sixers will want to play. Right. But Warriors, if they want to win a title, are going to have to go through at least one, probably two of those teams – that have legitimate confounding size for them. And Jonas Jurebko ain't getting the job done, Chief. Like, and I, I know Draymond Green's out there. I know that he's going to Jonas Jurebko? Is that like, what you're calling Belly now? <laughs> oh, sorry. Same thing. Same thing. I like that's it, the man. Point. I like legitimately, it. Yeah. Though, legitimately, though, that, that's a wonderful Freudian slip, and I only say this to cover my ass. Like, it's a Freudian slip in the sense of He's playing defense like Jonas Jerebko, and Jonas Jerebko is not out there for defense. Um, I didn't think that was a Freudian slip. I thought you were like, like that was a very subtle, like little jab in there. So that was a slip. That, that's a, that's how similar you see those two. That's incredible. Right now, with the way that Belly's been playing as of late, he was playing poorly before the back injury. He played like yeah. garbage last night. He got pulled for an effective list. When was the last time you saw Steve Kerr pull somebody because you're not good enough? Like, uh, he, I, they messed up the rotation. They just said, nope, you're out. We can't do it anymore. I, I'm totally with you on everything you said. I would just add the Miami Heat as a potential contender. Some people criticize yeah, me for but, now but throwing. Fi- I get my I get Miami, but I love Bam Adebayo, but like that's nothing that Draymond can't handle. Like, oh, no, no, not for to- the. Yeah, I hear you on that. I'm just saying in terms of Eastern Conference contenders, I just would throw okay. them in there as a potential team to make the finals. Um, I, I, and, and maybe the Bulls. I mean, that's your team, and and I don't think they're going to make it, but a lot of people... <laughs> okay, but it's so, a lot of people are still raving about them. They're still right up there at the top of the East. Look, uh, I, the Suns don't worry me too much just because that Christmas Day game is still fresh in my memory. Mm-hmm. I think they can handle them. And and the Warriors, I still maintain that when the urgency is there, they're going to they're gonna make things done. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going to accomplish things. Yeah. But I'm totally with you. And, and just to rehash what I covered yesterday, I told everyone why you couldn't make it. Though, that son of a bitch uh, locked on King's podcast. <laughs> totally sabotaged us. It was a really look, important man, they, day for the Kings. Huge. I mean, that, that, that franchise means the world to the NBA because who else are we going to laugh at? Uh, well, they put but, us in charge of this one, so let's be careful there. <laughs> but, we, but bottom line is, like you said, the Warriors couldn't do anything with a trade. They had no assets to offer that they're going to actually want to give up. Uh, the only way they're going to make a, a, a change is if they actually wave someone and add someone. You said Damian is the obvious choice. I'm nah, with you on not, paper not in terms of logic. Oh, even not anymore. You changed that? Because I was going to say they're never going to do it anyways, just because when it comes to the they team chemistry and his relationship. Yeah. No. So it, be- it, Belly is I the was, obvious I was choice. Of, like, uh, yeah, I was of the mindset that it would be Lee... Um, Lee played with a very clear "you can't cut me" energy last night against the Knicks, <laughs> and uh, I see it and I respect it. Like, listen, Belly. If Belly's going to be injured and ineffective, gone. He's Jonas Jerebko, and Jonas Jerebko gets cut. So um, <laughs> now, there's a couple yeah. of other things that have to be noted here when it comes to this because we're talking about the buyout market. The buyout yeah. market is somehow more complicated than trades. Uh, How so? Well, in that it's not ipso facto, right? There's no like, hey, I want this player, X, Y, Z, I then immediately get this player. There's a passiveness. Are you talking about the waiver wire, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, there's a passiveness to it, which is we're going to buy him out, so we're going to waive the contract, and then he's going to be on the open market. It's free agency, and free agency is never straightforward. Now, because there's always there could always be a mystery suitor. There can always be somebody yeah. who gets in at the last second. You're signing guys for the minimum in March. Like it's not going to have massive luxury tax implications adding. But it should be noted that cutting somebody will have luxury tax implications. True. Because those contracts are guaranteed. And so those contracts are just straight up on the books. So you're paying you're gonna pay them regardless. So the question is then do we add and then that's a couple other million dollars on top of everything. Is that worth the upgrade? In some cases, I can say yes. In some cases, you can say, what, what are we doing here? So, um, you know, we, we don't know if a one, we don't even know, like, if a Robin Lopez will be bought out. We don't know. If yeah, it, I, I see his we, name a lot. Yeah. I think we can presume that a Tristan Thompson will. Well, the, the reason Robin Lopez is talked about so much is because there's been 
flirty eyes between the Warriors and him multiple times. So yeah, that's true. And, that's true. and he fits that sort of Steve Kerr energy that they're into. So um, he would probably be their number one target. I can imagine that Draymond Green might have something negative to say about Mr. Tristan Thompson joining the team, but hey, you win a championship, so be it. Um, there's got to be somebody else out there that, that I'm spacing on now. It doesn't really matter. The buyout market <laughs> is uh, murky and clandestine, and I just wouldn't. The Warriors might just say we're not we're not into that. We're going to roll with what we got. Yeah. Draymond will come and fix it. They're going to do the whole James Wiseman is as good as any seven footer we could have traded for nonsense, which I hope they're right, but they're not. And um, we'll ro- they'll roll the dice on this. And you know what? They still might win the whole damn thing. It should be noted. But if we have to nitpick because this is a great team and that's all you can do is nitpick. Yep. Half court offense has been much better, especially in clutch situations. Particularly, I liked what they did last night. But they can get pushed around when Draymond's not there. And even when Draymond's there a little bit. And I'm looking at the landscape. I'm looking at who they're going to play down the line, who their true rivals are in this current NBA landscape, which was all shaken up yesterday. And those teams can push you around. So very yeah, interesting and, to see and, what the Dubs do. And when we come back, we're, we're going to get into that Wiseman talk some more. And um, I really want to delve and get your insights on a couple of interesting comments Steve Kerr made after both those losses when we come back. Yeah. Uh, but first, let's talk about our longtime sponsor, Bet Online. They've got you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football continues its march through the playoffs right to the big game. My copy says a couple weeks, it's a couple days. (laughs) BetOnline.net remains the best spot. (laughs) Sorry, Locked On folks for calling you out. Uh, BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just football. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on pro and college hoops, NHL boxing, UFC, along with live real-time updates of current games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the new amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Before I finish this copy, uh, hmm. it is Friday. The game's Sunday. Dieter, do you have any uh, any strong feelings that might help with bet online you know, customers? <laughs> um, no. Okay. Okay. A couple. A couple. A couple of thoughts on this. Uh, there are going to be two players in this game who are going to be double teamed consistently. I think those are Cooper Cup and Aaron Donald. I like their counterparts for Super Bowl MVP. That would be Odell Beckham Jr. and Von Miller. I like the long shot odds. On both mm. of those guys, mm. I think you'd be a fool if you're trying to make money. If you're not, you know, have if you don't have a rooting interest in the game, and you're just trying to make some money. Joey Burrow is going to give you a two to one return on Super Bowl MVP. Yeah, the Bengals have to win, but if the Bengals win, you know, Joey Burrow is the Super Bowl MVP. I feel like that's good value there, and um, I'm not touching anything as it pertains to the line on this game because it's been oscillating too much and there's a funkiness to it, and I, I just Oof. it's a smell. I don't like it. I'm getting away from it. <laughs> What I will do is I will do something that I usually do for big games, which is I will bet something called the alternate line. And I know you can do this on bet online. The yes. alternate line, whereas I bump it up to 9, 10, 11, I'll go double digits. And I think that there's a very viable scenario. And, and of course, no one knows anything. But I think there's a viable scenario with the state of the Rams pass rush, plus their offensive talent, that this could actually be a blowout. Now, uh, Will that happen? Who's to say? Obviously, the bookmakers think it will be a lot closer, and that's their prerogative. I think that you can get a pretty nice number on double-digit margin of victory for the L.A. Rams, and I think I'm going to be in on that. So I'll have a little bit of sprinklings on a bunch mm. of different things, but uh, mostly I'm just excited about having some beers. Oh, I love it. Yeah. How can you go wrong there? And uh, and my, the only thing I will say is, I, I and you and I, are in, I think, are in agreement on this, Joe mm-hmm. Burrow looks like a winner. He looks like a champion. It's hard to bet against that. that. What the hell does it look mean, like a winner mean? Uh, I'm speaking metaphorically, meaning like he 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 just has no, the, no, the, clearly. Comp- he doesn't the composition. Like yeah, he has okay. the composition of a champion based on what he's done in college and in just in his second year in the pros now. The dude just wins. Um, but I also think, too, it's either if it's going to be a blowout, it's the Rams. And if it's going to be a close game, I think it's the Bengals. That doesn't help gamblers at all, but that's just... My, my two cents on it. Uh, and yeah, so betonline.net, where the game starts. And those were Dieter's hopefully valuable insights. <laughs> you are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. 
part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It's Super Week brought to you by Get Upside, and there's no better place to get coverage of the big game than the Locked On NFL Podcast. Locked On Bengals and Locked On Rams are in L.A. all week covering the big game. He's Dieter Kurtenbach. I'm Cyrus Sotzes. Uh interesting thing that Steve Kerr has said now twice. He said this after the Jazz game. He said this uh, last night after the Knicks game, which is that he, and, and I'm not quoting for, verbatim, but it's close. He said, we looked small out there. Yeah, he said that uh, after he the said, Jazz game. And then last night he said we were getting pushed around out there again. Paris. Yeah, yeah. And and so, and which is, makes me wonder. I mean, Steve Kerr is a media savant. Is there, at times, do you, you, don't, you don't think so? Steve's an you made a weird noise when guy. I said that. Media savant. He's not misleading. Steve has the ability to tell the honest truth, probably to his detriment most. Media savant implies some sort of uh, oper- operative, you know. Uh, media savant implies that he's manipulating the media. I, I, I would never uh, apply that to Steve. Oh, now, maybe no, no, he's that... so Maybe he's so good at manipulating the media that we're not even on to it. But, uh, well, the reason why, I, well, in this case, the reason why I bring that up is because is he using the media to convey a message to Bob Myers? Would he do something like that, in your opinion? Like, hint, hint, Bob, we're small. Did or you because hear the rest and, of those quotes? Well, well, elaborate, please. He said it's not a problem. This is our team, and we feel like our team has the. He literally, he literally, he didn't contradict that statement. He just acknowledged the truth of what everyone saw the last two games, and then just said, "But we're very happy with our team. This is sometimes the downside of it. I think Draymond's going to help us when he comes back, and and that should solve a good deal of our problems." And it, it was, it was, no. So to answer your question very bluntly, no, he wasn't okay. trying to convey anything passive aggressively to Bob Myers. He talks to Bob every day. Like if he wants to say something, that's what Bob, I was trying to figure out. Bob. I was trying to figure out how open is the communication line between those this, two. This so so they the literally, this isn't the Lakers or the Nets. Like this is actually like a well-run organization. They might not always make the moves that people want, but like th- th- there's not a situation where they're not talking to each other or there's lies okay. happening behind the scenes. Like it's an open conversation. And again, that's good. do they need to, do they need to get a little bit bigger? Perhaps. Here's the tricky part of all of that, by the way, Cyrus. They might have to make that call before they see Draymond back on the court. Yeah, they might. Like, the buyout deadline is March 1. So you have to be bought out by March 1 in order to play in the playoffs. Is Draymond back on March 1? Is Draymond back the first week of March? I mean, everyone holds out these hopes, but like, as I told you i mean it looks like milwaukee maybe that clippers game the week before but when they play milwaukee on the 10th of march i would expect draymond to be back i would also expect most of the buyout dudes to have already found homes yeah you know yeah yeah they might have they might have to make a call on size if they are to go and shop for some well before draymond actually hits the court and we see if he solves the problem or not so there's a little bit tricky, and that's a that, it's literally millions of dollars in question there for Joe yeah. Lacob. Not that we're counting it because he's got the cash; he's fine. But he's a billionaire, he literally. Yeah, he's okay. He's definitely okay. Yeah, I, I never the last billionaire, thing. but yeah, point, <laughs> point 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 taken. Like there is a trickiness to this whole situation, but in terms of is Steve Kerr sending a message? No. Because the headline sends a message and the rest of the quote literally answers the question, <laughs> you know? So yeah. it, 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 it's just important to provide that context. And this is why I say Steve is not uh, a, a media savant. genius uh, savant gotcha. of that regard, because a media savant wouldn't give that little morsel and then have, that's how normal people talk, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, the only re- yes, we were getting pushed around. Who didn't see that? And then yeah. you go... Yeah, that's how normal people talk. And instead, Steve is didn't realize how much of red meat that would be and that, you know, people would be well, writing what's become peculiar? Well, what's become peculiar for me, one, I, I honestly really don't know how close uh, Kerr and Myers are. I've heard that they are and they communicate regularly, but they're, I firsthand don't know. Close. That's a that's great news. Um, and then the se- and then the second thing is Kerr has been peculiar, a, a beautiful word you used a moment ago, in the sense Maybe that a little bit too much. I don't know, but in the sense that uh, 
one minute he talks like he has no say over personnel decisions. And then the next minute he'll tell you and say, Gary Payton's here for the rest of the year. And so I, so I always get confused sometimes. And, and I, I just think it is obvious this team is small and I'm just wondering if they're going to do something. I get the Wiseman uh, attitude in terms of them being happy, him staying just because he is familiar with the system. Uh, my biggest problem with him last year if you look at Wiseman's numbers last year they weren't bad like they weren't atrocious for a rookie especially I think I thought he was doing okay I mean the results didn't show in the win-loss column but statistically he was doing all right for a rookie what concerned me was that he got in foul trouble a lot we saw him get the yank a lot and the leash pulled because he'd get two fouls within like three minutes and we never even saw him and that's going to be a huge problem against a team like the Suns against the Bucks mm-hmm. with veteran big men who can easily manipulate him on the court uh, to draw easy fouls and get him off. Um, yeah, this is a conundrum, news, man. I guess the good news there is that they won't need him for more than five to ten minutes, which is about all. <laughs> anyway. um, yeah, let's hope. Yeah, let's let's hope. be honest about what James Wiseman was last year. They were flashes, and yeah. there was a lot of hope and optimism around him because Correct. he was a new shiny toy for a team that re- never gets to shop in that market. Right, like number Correct. two overall pick. That's a we don't understand how to handle stuff like that around these parts as of late. Now, certainly Warriors fans from, you know, who've done this their whole life understand this plight all too well, but it had been a minute and a lot of new people <laughs> had jumped on to the bandwagon, myself included. So there That's was, we are. there was always a sense of, optimism and i think that there was a longer leash than most people would generally give a player who was playing that poorly i think i think the highs were overblown and i'm part of that problem and i think the lows were glossed over a little bit i i I have spent some time as of late because i'm that kind of a sicko watching james wiseman not highlights i'm talking like just turn on a game from last year youtube tv dvr turn on a game from last year and watch to say that he didn't know what he was doing is an understatement. And it it permeated every ounce of what the warriors were doing because it undermined the entire system. And he's talented. He might figure it out. Flip a coin. I don't know. I can't tell you who won't, (laughs) (laughs) but like, yeah, he's, I can tell you flat out, out today, there was not a general manager in the NBA who was calling about James Wiseman and would have offered a first round pick. No, no, I'm with you on that. The people who think he has trade value right now are out of their minds. They have no clue what they're talking about. Plain and simple. Teams don't want him for the value that he w- could some potentially someday uh, deserve. Yeah. Um, it'd be stupid to trade him right now. It, re- it really would. They're 100%. just in a tough spot. They're in a tough spot. And, and the, only, the only options are either... You find some diamond in the rough uh, who's playing in the G League, who has limited experience yeah. that you can do make some weird trade and then give him a two-way to replace Chioza yeah. or, or Weatherspoon. And, and again, mm. the two-way deals are not, you can't just hand a two-way deal out. There are very restrictive rules pertaining to that. The, one, the only one I know for certain is that it has to be, you have to be four years or less of service uh, 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 d- yeah. conducted to the NBA. And and a lot of players have played more than that, that especially you want. And the other option is you wave either Bielitsa or probably JTA, but they're not going to do that. No. So it's either belly and you bring someone else. I, I will promise you this. I, I don't know what our schedule is next week then yet, but next show, I am going to have a list. I so actually started doing the research. Are you going to get is- the G League guys together? No, I'm not doing that kind of research. Oh, I'm doing like, no, no, that's, that's, I don't get paid enough to do that. But uh, <laughs> I'm going to do research on potential available NBA free agents that the Warriors could pursue. I started doing the research and it's the upcoming list. upcoming off season? No, like right now. You're talking buyouts. Buyouts and big men that are just still Dude, floating out the there. Streets. The, Dudes they, that are just on the streets they, working at Subway. Somebody signed Greg Monroe the other day. There is, the bottom of the barrel has been has been scraped my friend it, yes it has that's what i'm trying empty. to say that's what i'm trying to say the research is thin but i'm going to produce a list because the only name that that was somewhat lucrative that seemed interesting the sun's grabbed him already and that's yeah, bismack and i don't even know if he yeah and i don't even know marvelous. if he would have been and, and yeah so I, but again i'm going to pr- i'm going to come up with something on monday to uh either make warriors fans more depressed at the mm-hmm. fact that there's just nothing out there um or maybe there is someone but it's first it's an interest it's an interesting yeah. test for this team come <laughs> come Sunday or Saturday. You're absolutely 
You're absolutely you right. Anthony I got to play Davis, the Davis. You get the Clippers, and then by the way, uh, here's Nikola Jokic. This team better get big fast. Oh, uh, and we'll talk about all, all that and so much more. I got to play the sound effect first. Oh, cool. did you hear that? Is that the That's sound of uh, another sale on Shopify? Oh my goodness, you are too good at this. Yes, you nailed it. Shopify is what we're talking about. It is the sound of another sale on Shopify. Shopify gives entrepreneurs the resources once reserved for big business. So upstarts, mm. startups, and established mm. businesses alike can sell everywhere, synchronize online and in-person sales, and effortlessly stay informed. Scaling your business is a journey of endless possibility. Believe me, this podcast started out selling nothing. And today we're selling a lot more. <laughs> and, you and sell what you're not, selling too. <laughs> If you want to take over, please do. Uh, we're not we're not stopping there because success is a million mile, milestones on a forever evolving path. Um, I love how Shopify has the tools and resources that make it easy for any business to succeed from down you the really street. Really love that. To... Is that is that something you feel deeply passionate about? Yes. Okay. And, Good. Just want to make sure. And like mine, Shopify powers millions of businesses, like our podcast, from first yes. scale. To full scale, go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA, all lowercase for a free 14 day trial and get full access to Shopify's entire suite of features, including their cap sensitive uh, tech screens. Grow your business with Shopify today. Go to shopify.com slash locked on NBA, lowercase right now, shopify.com slash NBA. This is also brought to you by Wes Goldberg and Dieter Kernbox, one of their favorite candy bars or candy bars. I did it. It tastes like a candy bar sometimes. There. Yeah, maybe that's a good selling point because it does taste like it. But it's a protein bar, and we're talking about yeah. built bar. By the way, did you hear about what Wes did just to finish up this uh, week long interesting side story that's coinciding with all of our built reads? He, he retracted he his Tom, tweet. Did he, did he fly Tom Brady to New England or no? No, he he retracted the tweet. He uh, oh, not man. retracted. Who, who he could issued have seen a retraction. That coming. <laughs> He issued a retraction that said he jumped the gun. Uh, so so we're now on standby in terms of what Tom Brady does. You really don't think he's going to come to the Niners, huh? No. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Sorry. I'll save that for radio tonight. No. That's okay. No. Oh, that hurts so well. Well, there is still Built Bar. You can enjoy those <laughs> yummy protein bars. Have you tried the Puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's Well, they got best. Puffs now? The tasting bars, they do. Puffs are the first ever protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, marshmallowy. They're not just a protein bar. They're a treat covered in 100% real chocolate. Puffs are a fan favorite with some incredible flavors. There's yummy, cinnamony, churro. Oh, I love churros. Oh, Coconut man. marshmallow, banana cream no, pies. Okay. I know, dude. And I gotta, I'm actually gaining weight. This is so I need some built bars so I don't gain more weight while I'm enjoying some yumminess. These are going to be your new favorite. This goes against what Charles Barkley's advice was to Zion Williamson, which is if it tastes good, don't eat it. Built bars are the exception to that. They're covered in 100% real chocolate. They're low calorie. They're high protein. If you go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15, you'll get 15% off your order. Again, go to built.com, use the promo code LOCKED15. For fifteen percent off at built.com. I thought you were gonna say something different about You are Locked On Warriors, your daily Golden State Warriors podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We're making Locked On Warriors your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get podcasts. He's Dieter Kurtenbach. I'm Cyrus Sotzes, wrapping things up. Uh, do you think Clay Thompson, were you happy with that final shot to end the game? It's a clean look, man. I it was. I, here, here, I understand the irony of somebody who writes off of every game and talks about every game in a variety of platforms. This person then saying, who cares? <laughs> I understand the irony. Warriors fans, you will forget about this game. I'm not talking years from now. I'm not talking months from now. You will forget this game happened in five days. How about tomorrow, Saturday, when they play on national TV against the Lakers? Now, nah, you'll, you'll remember that. It's close enough context. But you will forget that they lost this game to the Knicks <laughs> by the time they play Denver next week. Do you uh you tweeted that you didn't think the foul there was it was a foul that the no yeah. call was correct. You still believe yeah. that? 
Yeah. I actually, actually, I saw you tweet that and I actually recorded the, the highlight, put it in slow motion, and it made me change my mind hardcore just because I saw Mitchell move his hip and leg directly in toward Wiggins, thus causing him to fly sideways like that. And it made me realize that is a foul, but I could see the ref missing yeah. that too. Um, I, I, I think, I think two things on that one, uh, this is what losing teams do. They nitpick things that are 50, 50 calls <laughs> and blame those instead of, I don't know, playing like crap for 47 minutes. Yeah. 45. Um, I don't want to go back to an NBA where def defenders get no benefit of the doubt whatsoever. And Mitchell Robinson deserved the benefit of the doubt on that play. I thought he went up pretty straight. I think that Andrew Wiggins uh, typically shows more strength in those situations. He was flailing, right? Like, what, what was that about? He's been um, for like weeks now he's 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 not doing what i think he should be doing but that's just my opinion 15 points is it not is, enough I, I that is what it is i mean he did not have yeah. the first half at all but uh no i i i just i when it happened i didn't immediately think oh that's a foul gotcha when i saw the what replay, about Kurt's reaction yeah it was over the top and I, yeah honestly he's lucky that that wasn't that one point wasn't the true margin of the game i mean it proved to be a very important point um I yeah I thought I thought I, I I thought it was a complete overreaction. I have had conversations with coaches and managers in other leagues as it pertains to arguing with officials, and I won't name this person, but I I, I talked to a uh, coach a coach who said that I'm never going to argue with an official again because it provides absolutely no value, yeah. and all it can do is hurt our team. I'm not saying that Steve Kerr should do that. I can't tell. I, I get angry. I get angry easily. Uh, I, I got a short temper. Steve <laughs> Kerr is a competitor. He's in the yeah. moment. I'm not. I, I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to do the whole like Steve Kerr lost this game without you know losing. Oh, he did it. He did it. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't. And thank goodness that they didn't lose that game by one. That there were other things that happened, including you know Clay Thompson missing that shot and all that. I, I'm glad that that didn't prove to be the obvious margin, but. Uh, I don't care. I don't care <laughs> about that foul. I don't care about that. Like Clay Thompson had a shot to take that game to overtime. He missed it. And uh, we move on. And yeah. we acknowledge that the overall point of that game wasn't the ref screwed us. It was the Warriors just got wrecked in the post for 48 minutes. I I honestly thought Steve Kerr was trying to get ejected. I, you know, sometimes coaches do I'm that for motivational, yeah, for motivational purposes. And I, I thought that's what the angle was for his for his reasoning there. Uh, and I have no problem with Clay Thompson ever taking a last shot. It's a yeah. nitpick just to say that. Look, Steph was open, um, but look, Clay, Clay had a wide open Clay. look. It's fine. He had a wide open look. You're absolutely right, and, and it's just a nitpick. Uh, before we go, uh, the Warriors play on national TV uh, tomorrow night. We're recording this on Friday, uh, February 11th. Yep. The Lakers. I, I look. If you're a member of Dub Nation, you are relishing the 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 tailspin, the downfall of this Laker What's franchise. They're, they're not good. Happening right before our eyes, but they're they are a big team. Uh, that is one of the things yeah. they have going for them. Like, what do you see happening this uh, this game? I would hope the opposite of what's happened the last two games. Um, Heck yeah, yeah. No, it's a huge test. Uh, here, here are two things that are, are worth noting. Dwight Howard, uh, much like Steve Kerr, very easily knocked off his kilter, and <laughs> um, and Anthony Davis is the softest big man in the NBA. So <laughs> stand a chance of not getting absolutely blasted in the low post. But if those two guys come to play and put on their hard hats, mm -hmm. the Warriors better have double duty going on. And um, it's going to be an interesting test. Uh, yeah. They have been asking Kevon Looney to do a lot. He has picked up this quad cow, I don't know, what leg injury. He hasn't looked like himself the last two games. There's no alternative Jonathan yeah. Kaminga is 19 years old. He is big and strong and can jump out of the gym, but he ain't he ain't stopping like a Mitchell Robin. Like he's not stopping a, a Julius Randle as empty as all the calories Julius Randle provides are. Like that's he he's he's an upscale five. Like he's a five only because it's the year 2022 and because you can just run the floor all day every day. If the Lakers want to slow this game down, and I, I'm of the full belief that they will want to because yes. they sure as hell don't want to be playing fast, 
the Warriors better find ways to speed it up. And that's my biggest thing. If you're not going to rebound, if you're not going to to provide any resistance other than sending a guy to the line in the low post, you better be getting steals. You better yep. make that ball move, and you yep. better and you better find ways to get the ball into transition. Because if you play a half court game with anybody, and the Knicks might be the case number one example, if you want to play a half court game with anybody as the Golden State Warriors, you are likely to get got because you are not a half court team. You are a transition team. You are a push and pace team. You want chaos. Create chaos. And by the way, when you create chaos, you can't have them biggins out on the floor. So exactly, uh, exactly. Establish your defense. Mm-hmm. Win the win the. You know, it's easy for big men to establish a tone in the game. Don't let it happen. Do whatever you have to do to not let it happen. If you got a double or triple team, go to town. I don't care. But the Warriors need to control the pace and tone of a ball game for the first time in a minute. I'm with you, man. And I just want to uh, uh, finish my side of this up with, uh, yeah. look, this that was, this was not Steve Kerr's greatest game yesterday against the Knicks. <laughs> I feel like Gary Payne II should have been playing more. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why he he only had, I think, nine there's minutes a, there's total. There's a limitation. With the, there's, a, like, there's a secret injury there, I think. You, the, I, I'm with you. I think there is either hernia or something's going on there. Maybe it's, you're right. There's something going on there because nine minutes was, I mean, he's clearly, need, you need him for more than that. And, and then most his move- game, right? Like that, that's like, that's a yes. speed alley fight. Like that's the exact yes. thing I won in the contest. I saw in the first, I think it was the first quarter. Uh, I saw him on, on a uh, Randall for a moment. And the, I remember Fitz talking about the massive size mis- mismatch and Gary handled him. I was like, why was he not in this game more? But you might be onto something with that injury thing. And Moses Moody is starting to show that he could really contribute. Don't wait till six minutes left in the fourth quarter to bring him in. He could do more, you know, I, I, that was my, that's all yeah. I have to say. No. Um, yeah. So have a great weekend. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Um, I do want to add, by the way, Dieter, I'm really happy. Our, I mentioned this yesterday. Our arrangement is finally settled with Locked On, with you, with me. You are okay. transparent with me, man, and I cannot thank you enough for that. Because um, I'm relieved now. I, I think you're relieved, right? Are we all on the same page finally? Are we all good? Who knows, man? <laughs> Stuff's chaotic. <laughs> I'm going to get thrown out of the next one. <laughs> Well, I'm happy, and I think, again, we're Dieter's going to be here three days a week, which is huge. The other two days, I'll try to get good guests on. Um, I don't know. We haven't figured out our schedule next week yet. Are, are you able, available Monday or to be determined? We'll figure it out. Do we want the audience in on this? I don't know. I got, I got oh. a lot of stuff on the calendar. I, I Sounds gotta, good. We'll figure I it out. keep some sort of a low profile, right? Here's the deal. If you follow the Twitter account, Locked on Dubs, we'll post the schedule there. You can follow Dieter on Twitter, at Dieter, super easy, and me on Twitter, at Dog Surf Uh Thanks for making Locked on Warriors uh, your first listen every day. And again, we'll be back next week, of course. we got that Saturday Lakers game and many more games to come. Now make your second listen, Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked on Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight mm-hmm. from Lee Sterling. Mm-hmm. It's, <laughs> it's free and available wherever, our, our boy Q, man, wherever you get podcasts. Dieter, it's always a pleasure, my man. Um, see you next week, brother. Let's do it.